Hi, my name is Lisa Tompkins. I'm the owner and sole proprietor and grower of native plants for Carolina Heritage Nursery. And you can see my nursery behind you <laughs> in the woods in Waxhaw. Um, native plants are the plants that were here before the Europeans arrived. That's the working definition. Most of our landscape plants come from other continents entirely. So native plants are adapted to the wildlife that lives here. And it turns out that some creatures such as butterflies are very particular. So if you don't have native plants, then no butterflies. I'm gonna walk you around and show you a few different things and hopefully you'll meet some plants you didn't know or maybe you'll see some that you do know. And um, we'll just see what I come up with. This is a spice bush, which has been used by the spice bush swallowtail caterpillar. You can see these leaves have been folded. Right now, um, we're between caterpillars. They've already done their work there. They've, they folded the leaves where they hide out and then they come out and eat the leaves of spice bush and sassafras. Um, so those are the only two host plants that the spice bush swallowtail butterfly will, caterpillar, will use. This is Monarda punctata, spotted horse mint. It came from a local uh, population in Mecklenburg County. So this is what I would call a local ecotype and these, these plants that naturally occur in our area are going to be best adapted to our climate and our soil and water conditions as well as the pollinators that like to visit them. Monarda punctata, spotted horse mint. So some plants I collect uh, seed and grow the local, from the local population. This is one wreath goldenrod, uh, which is a shade-loving goldenrod. Goldenrods do not cause hay fever. That's ragweed. Um, but this one occurs naturally on my property. So it's a pretty little um, perennial for part shade conditions. It's not just flowers that are beautiful, but fruits are beautiful too. This one I call hearts of Buston. Some people call it strawberry bush. It's uh, Euonymus americanus. And it doesn't really look like much through much of the year. And then the fruit explodes. Um, deer do like to eat them. They occur widely in this area, but often the deer have nibbled them down. So if you want to have a good specimen, provided some protection. This one just popped up in the middle of my enclosure for my vegetable garden. So it's full of fruit and the deer have not found it. So hearts of Buston, Euonymus americanus. Another fruiting shrub is American beauty berry. Um, now there are lots of beauty berries sold in garden centers. Most of them are not the native one. Um, the native has larger leaves and berries that cluster right around the stem. Um, they're beautiful. Uh, people even use them to make jelly. <laughs> um, you can cut them, I believe, and take them inside for a dried arrangement. But the birds like them too, so this is some this is good bird food for fall migrating birds. This is great blue lobelia, one of about four species of lobelia that occur here in Union County. This one is pollinated by bumblebees. I'm going to introduce you to another one, which is pollinated by hummingbirds, but. Um, this is a nice one. It occurs naturally here and it makes a nice garden plant for shade, moisture, um, and it's just a, a beautiful, beautiful blue and a 
good for bumblebees. This is the caterpillar for the red spotted purple butterfly. A beautiful black and blue butterfly that you'll find flitting around here in the Piedmont. Um, it's feeding on black willow, which is occurs widely, but is not often included in landscapes. And of course, with development, uh, many of them are being cleared and removed from our landscape. So if you want to have the red spotted purple, then having a black willow is a good thing. Um, Oh, there's another butterfly that uses this as a host plant. And of course, I can't remember what its name is at the moment. It's a mimic of the monarch. Anyway, the other plant that this um, caterpillar uses is um, black cherry, which also occurs widely, but is rarely ever used in landscapes. So this is just an example of a butterfly that has to find the right plant to, to lay its eggs on so it can feed the caterpillars. This is the other Lobelia. Um, this one is pollinated by hummingbirds. It has this red tubular flower and I believe the pollen is deposited on its head <laughs> uh, when it goes to nectar on the flower. Uh, you can see these growing in ditches, on the roadside, by creeks, but it also makes a beautiful plant for the garden. Also serves as a butterfly garden, but um, yeah, this is in my rain garden. So I hope you've learned a little something about native plants and that you can use in your garden that don't just provide beauty, but also uh, benefit the creatures around us and um, that you can enjoy by chasing butterflies or um, looking at the different pollinators that visit them or the birds that feed on either the insects that they um, nourish or uh, the fruit from different shrubs and trees. All these things um, provide wildlife benefit as well as beauty that looks like the heritage, the natural heritage of Union County. And if you want to find out more, you can visit my Facebook page, Carolina Heritage Nursery, or you can email me at carolinaheritagenursery at gmail.com. Thank you.